I didn't have nowhere to go. I just got kicked out of my family's house. I was living in Staten Island at a group home. You feel afraid? You're nobody in here if you're not legal. I grew up in Bedford Stuyvesant in Brooklyn. It was a tough neighborhood. All the violence, everybody shooting every day. The Door. It's a place you might not have heard of, but for thousands of young people here in New York City, it represents a lifeline that's helped them stay off the streets and better themselves. The teenagers and young adults who come to The Door hail from different backgrounds. Some may have been rejected by their families because of their sexual identities. Others are trying to get away from violence or drug use at home. But every day, they head to The Door's headquarters in Soho for job training, health care, and GED classes. The organization is also tackling a problem that's come to the forefront in recent months, homelessness, youth homelessness, to be more exact. Joining us now to talk about this issue and The Doors' work is the organization's executive director, Julie Shapiro, and Ellie Olivero, who was once homeless and turned her life around with help from The Door. Welcome to both of you. Thank Thanks. You for Thanks for having us. Thank you for spending some time with us. Julie, i to start with you and, and talk about The Door. First of all, I was fascinated when I asked you how long the organization has been around. When did it get started? How long ago did it started? And what? And, and tell me a little bit more about the work that it does. Sure. So uh, the organization's been around for 44 years. It started in '72, and uh, its founding belief is is one that we still uh, we still run on, which is that the challenges and problems facing urban youth are complex, and they need complex, very integrated solutions. And so, our model is to provide comprehensive youth development services in a very diverse and caring environment and help help young people realize their full potential. One of the, the, the issues that you've had to focus on fairly recently is this notion of, of homelessness, but specifically youth homelessness. And I guess the question for you is, why are the issues surrounding youth homelessness different from, from adults and how we deal with them? Well, young people, uh, a lot of young people who come to the door and who are experiencing homelessness are having some form of disconnection with their families, with their communities, with their neighborhoods, and uh, come to the door for a whole host of reasons, but they're looking for a safe space and, uh, and for a new start. And young people, uh, they are in a different de developmental stage than adults. They don't have the same resources. They don't have the same supports. They may not have the same life skills. And so there's more vulnerability there. And so, uh, you know, our approach to uh, helping resolve youth homelessness is really to have the, the whole range of supports that will help them get, get stabilized and be successful. What are the problems with simply saying to a, a, a youth, there's a, a shelter over there, an adult right. shelter. Go ahead. You'll be fine. They'll take right. care of you. Right. But you, you say there's some difficulties. Why? Well, you know, young people need a little bit more support than that. And so, you know, we have um, many, many caring adults in our building. Our staff are um, very well experienced in building connections with young people, understanding what their goals are, and helping them uh, address all the issues that may be uh, associated with their homelessness. So, you know, we address health issues, mental health issues, issues around legal status. We try to have a really, really comprehensive approach and it's all very relationship-based. It's very youth development-based, so it's, uh, we really try to build on the strengths of young people. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's how we tackle it. Which leads us to Ellie. Um, you've been kind enough to come on in and you've got your door t-shirt on, your favorite <laughs> no, one, you said. <laughs> um, tell us about your story. How did you get to the door and, and how did the organization help you? So I got to the door about six years ago, and a friend told me about the door. I was in a shelter. Um, I had to get my GED, so um, they told me about the door. I went down to the door for my GED, and I realized they had many different services that I could utilize. So from there, it's like I got my GED after class. I was going to work readiness programs, a program, and they was paying me to look for a job, build my resume, and keep a job. And, and it was pretty cool. So after that, I was like, I found out more about RHY. They had a, a particular service for um, runaway homeless youth. And um, it was pretty cool. The case managers assist me to get in permanent housing. And here I am now. I got my own house in the Bronx. So you're, you're indeed a success story. What, Ellie, if, if, if the, the Ellie of 2009 or 2010 came to you now and said, 
what do I do? What can I do? What would, what would you say to her? Don't give up. Keep moving forward. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Well, it, it, it's good and very hard and difficult work that the door has been doing, as you said, for a lot of years now. Julie, thanks for spending some time Thank with you us. Thank so Ellie, congratulations to you. Thank good you for so you. much. And Thank good you. luck to you in, in, in the future. You're a great role model for them to point to. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, you both take care now. Thank you. And for more information on how you can volunteer or donate to the door, head to our website, metrofocus.org.